Generic greeting and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of science fiction and all its often bumbling silliness to you, the viewer. Today, as a discussion piece, we'll be covering how to design a good spaceship, what to do to make your creations memorable, clean, and visually enjoyable. Of course, this needs a warning right at the beginning. While I will be using a few actual, real principles of design that I learned from a year in a fine arts course, this is still heavily opinion-based, and when it comes to aesthetics and beauty, every person is different. Don't jump down my throat if I call your favorite spaceship ugly. It's okay to be wrong, we just have to accept that and move on. This topic was also picked by size patrons, so thanks guys for once again shooting down power armor as a topic to discuss. You have made the wrong decision for the second week in a row. It's fine though, I know who you are and what you voted for. And speaking of, if you'd like to support Psy, get access to our content a day early, and have a say in future content, then check out our Patreon, and if space bucks are short, like, sub, comment, and share the video since every little bit helps. And with that, let's get on to the actual video, and I'm going to break it down into a few different categories. Those being shape, scale, simplicity, purpose, and color. The first of which is basic shape, how well the building block shapes of your design are used to convey intention and feel. Feel. Second is scale and balance. How are the different elements of your design sized to convey importance and guide the eye and prevent visual clutter? Third is simplicity. How clean and clear the design is in distinguishing and displaying its various parts. This is different from the second one. Fourth is purpose. This is a little off into the weeds. How well your design conveys its intended or stated purpose clearly. If it looks like a warship, but you tell me it is an ice hauler, I will not believe you. And last but not least is color. How well your use of, or lack of, accentuates your design. That would boil down to SSSPC. How do I make a snappy acronym out of that? So, starting off with shape. Now, something a lot of people don't know, or that is just not general knowledge, is that shapes hold meaning just like colors do. Red may be aggressive or bloody, passionate, hot, Blue is calm, relaxing, cool, etc. Shapes are the exact same way, and the most basic shapes are triangles, squares, and circles. Triangles are aggressive and dangerous. They're pointy and imposing. Their profile narrows and looks angry. Classic Disney villains make use of this like Jafar, whose entire stance is triangular. Or Hades, who is covered in triangular design elements like his teeth, smile, and nose structure as an example. Circles are the exact opposite. They're welcoming and friendly, softer, if you will, and reflect a more calm disposition. Santa, or the classic old good guy priest you find in every RPG, are big, round, boisterous figures of safety and joy and general welcome safety. Squares are a mix of both and are often a brick shithouse design. Huge, imposing, and often very powerful, but on the more respectable, honorable, and responsible side. They have the feeling of stalwart and immovable characters in design, your classic Superman and knights in shining armor. Shapes provide the same feel for science fiction designs depending on the feel you're going for. The Imperial Star Destroyer is a massive triangle, and it's one of the most aggressively oppressive looking ships in science fiction. On the flip side, the Galaxy class from Star Trek looks like its role. A diplomat, a negotiator, an explorer, an exemplar of good times. Then we have the Paris class heavy frigate from Halo. From every angle, a series of bricks, but it looks strong, powerful, and it looks and feels like a soldier. Even when it's getting bodied by the Covenant, it's an exemplar of stoic, unmoving duty. Now, again, not every ship design out there will share the same philosophy, but for the most part, this is a filter you can apply to the vast majority of ships out there. By the way, keep the Star Destroyer in your mind, we're going to be using it as an example at the very end for all of this. After shape, we come to scale and balance. Now this is very simple, very easy to understand. Don't missize the different parts of your ship because it will look stupid. And this isn't just complaining, this is quite real. Human brains have universal... Yeah. For lack of a better term, the ticks that draw attention or create pleasant aesthetics. The most notable of these for this topic is size and distinctiveness. The human eye is naturally drawn to the largest shape or brightest color in any given area. To a degree, I mean the actual color of said color matter, besides the point. 
If there's a fancy looking stone along the beach, say some kind of strange or completely out there color contrasting against the yellowish browns of the sand, your eye will naturally be drawn to it because it stands out. And if there's a giant billboard off to the side with some flashy imagery, your eye will also be drawn there because it's huge and takes up a big, flat area of your vision. So when looking at almost anything, your eye will be first drawn to the largest consistent area, then the next largest, and so on and so on, almost like following an imaginary line. Another thing is the rule of thirds. Essentially divide your view up into nine areas in a grid. If something is balanced along those lines or along those grid squares, then it will look more aesthetically pleasing than something that isn't and tends to hold a better visual balance. Examples, a really good design and a really shit design from the same race using scale. In Mass Effect, the Quarian Fleet Cruiser is an amazing ship. Its central circular habitation module, the band around it and in front that serves as the command decks, and the prongs coming off the back end with the cargo bay in the middle, just, it is excellent. It looks like a military ship pressed into multiple civilian roles by necessity or vice versa. It also has an almost windswept look to it that's just, oh, chef's kiss. And the cargo containers trailing behind are fantastic flavor. Its shape and silhouette blends very nicely through itself, and it never looks or feels jarring. Your eye first snaps to the ring, following its shape before being pulled by the natural way it extends to the middle, and then the rear end with the containers. It is a pleasure to see this thing on screen, and it maintains an incredible amount of readability and simplicity, despite how complicated it actually is when you really get down to the nitty gritty. I think a strike against it is that it's copy-pasted way too many times, Mass Effect 3, but hey, not everything can be perfect. And speaking of definitely not perfect, we have the golf ball. This thing is just so comically bad. The central habitation sphere is a really cool design idea. I can vibe with it. I really like the idea of generating, you know, centripetal force and using that to basically create gravity by proxy. But the actual design is just hilariously missized. This legit does not look like a spaceship at all. It looks like a semi-unfinished space station. If you copied the rear tail, made it bigger, added a few more at semi-random intervals around the main ring, I would 100% believe it was a space station and that those were docks or shipyards built around it. It just carries that aesthetic because of how bulky and big and just comically misproportioned it is. And at the beginning, when I said that this was very simple, don't missize things because it'll look dumb, it does look really dumb. Moving on from that, we have simplicity. Do not, for the love of God, greeble everything up to high heaven. In any composition, some clutter is expected and can enhance the image. That's understandable. But any overlap, any visual noise has to be kept to the edges or boundaries because it can and will interfere with your ability to parse shapes, colors, and designs, and will turn what could otherwise be an amazing spaceship into an absolute forest of pointless garbage. Just like paintings are meant to be seen from several feet away, Spaceships are meant to be seen from great distances. Some detail is great, like I said. A very busy section here, armor panels and detailing there, a communication suite up front and engine assembly and back, sure, absolutely. That's fantastic for some variety and flavor. But going overboard makes your design look like camo, a mess of indistinguishable colors and shapes of approximate varying size. And I have two examples, again, good and bad. The Mercury-class Battlestar from Battlestar Galactica, as an amazing example of this done amazingly. The Mercury is large. Simple shapes and surfaces. The majority of the head, flight pods, and central ship are a uniform gray armor paneling, with occasional cutout lines separating the armor panels and even fainter lines that look like raised textures, so it doesn't appear actually smooth. And there are also extremely noisy areas. The prow is cluttered with comms equipment, lights, guns, and more that extend along the gunnery trench. The eye cutouts are incredibly full with machinery and other bits and bobs that I still don't know exactly what they do, but for the most part, the ship is visually very easy to separate into large, uniform surfaces and then see all of the detail baked onto them. And coming off of that, really visually bad design for so many reasons, and oh, dreadnoughts. 
You were such a cool game and I loved you. Rest in pepperoni. But your ships sucked so bad. Look at this. This is chaos. Where the hell do you even begin with this thing? My eyes are immediately drawn to the missile silos in the middle since they are the flattest and largest piece of the ship available. There are all of these random things coming off the ship every which way that throw off the ship's genuinely simple and graceful lines. There are entire batteries of broadside guns embedded in the back that blend into a blackish gray blob because they're too damn detailed, and there is no space to breathe. Every square inch of this ship is caked in guns, 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 and more guns, with guns in between and on top for good measure, with a few down below just in case. It is so hilariously busy to the point that it's painful to look at. Even worse though is that Dreadnought had a few elegant, amazing designs in there as well. Like look at this dagger shaped ship, fantastic. But unfortunately, this game is dead so there's no hope for any redesigns or a future. God, sometimes I hate the gaming community, it was such a fun game. Moving on though after that to number four, the purpose of your design. Now this is going to be a little bit more nebulous, I'm going to kind of explain a little more detail as we go through. Also, in my opinion, this is by far one of the most important when it comes to creating a feel or aesthetic for your ship. Your design should represent the purpose it's intended for, and the easiest way to go about this is mirroring real-life design tendencies due to actual constraints. Let's talk about civilian, industrial, and military technology. When it comes to industrial machinery or transportation or building, it has one goal. Big. Bigly big. Biggest big you've ever bigged. It should be blocky and ugly, built to work at the bare minimum and work as well as possible. If it needs to dig, giant fugly rotary shovel bin on a conveyor belt. It's spindly where it can be, it's reinforced where it needs to be, and it's built with function over every other consideration. The Canterbury from The Expanse is Fantastic. I, it is probably one of my favorite designs for this kind of thing ever. I've talked about this in other videos, but it's so perfect. It's an ice mining and hauling ship. It needs to capture and process icy rocks before storing them and hauling them back to wherever it goes to drop them off so people can actually not dehydrate to death. To this end, it's a giant bucket with machinery and power systems coming off at every which angle, almost haphazardly inside. It looks like an old, purpose-built ship that was never meant to be anything other than a dirty cog in industry's never-ending engine. It is great. When we move on to civilian ships, they're built often for comfort and style. Think about how things are done in real life. When a new car is made, not only is its function important, but also its comfort and its appearance. It's something that is built to be not only functional, but attractive, sleek, desirable, something people would enjoy being around or within, or at the very least tolerate spending time in it over short or long duration, like an airplane. We see the likes in Battlestar Galactica's civilian transports, or the multiple Star Wars shuttles that we see in many of the movies in the extended universe. Sleek and elegant, but serving their specific purpose well. In many cases with civilian ships as well, they are far more able than military or industrial vessels for universe building storytelling as well. This is getting a little bit off into the weeds, but the general aesthetics, the quality, the luxury that you present in many of these vehicles can very easily display quite openly and immediately what kind of environment you're in. Take the beautiful ships of the Royal Naboo from Star Wars in episode one, was it? I, 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 my memory is blacked out most of the prequels, but they, the giant silver ships. And you look at the upper layers of Coruscant and you see all of these incredible transports and ships and these beautiful speeders, and it just radiates political power and wealth. Compared to the outer rim that you see on Tatooine or in the lower levels of Coruscant, where things barely look like they're working, they're grungy, they're dirty, a lot of that style and a lot of that aesthetic is completely stripped away and it looks like the people have gotten whatever they can get their hands on. It is a huge part of storytelling, especially in a more civilian-oriented story where giant warships and space wizards aren't the immediate focus. 
If we think about military equipment, it is built to first and foremost work, just like industrial stuff, but it's often built to be a unique kind of utilitarian. If it's not needed or beneficial, throw it away. But if it is needed or beneficial, then make it as effective and efficient as possible. This leads to designs that often look sleek, but angular. They look raw and unfiltered, almost like an engine, where every component is housed and used correctly, but where each piece and part can be identified from the outside. These designs should look like power and fortitude wrapped up in ego. It should be the definition of the projection of power and influence from whatever nation made it. When we see the Kaldari ships from EVE Online, or the Amar ships as well, now that I think about it, are amazing at this, their ships are often aggressive and angular with the rare but pronounced sloping segments. They look designed specifically for conflict and to be technologically as, as advanced as possible and be as focused for war as possible. When you look at the Amar, they often have that same feel to them, but they cloak it in a little bit of religious zealotry. While the armor and raw design is very utilitarian for most Amar ships, in many cases they go way above and beyond with all the gold detailing, the ivory paneling and paint that they put on their ships, and all of this extra gaudy garbage that's completely unneeded, but completely sells the fact that they're a ridiculously over-the-top religious imperial theocracy nightmare nation. Although, if we're talking about religious nightmare nation designs, ooh, 40k says hello, yikes, imperial ships, oh boy, that's an entire other can of worms. And finally, we have color. This one is going to be shorter, but is still, in my opinion, quite important because it can bring everything together and wrap up in a nice, perfect little bow on top. Now, as I mentioned earlier, colors can convey meaning and often hold specific meanings depending on culture or society or the context they're in, with a few general universal rules such as cooler colors drawing less attention and generally conveying a more calm disposition, while warmer colors catch attention more easily and convey more energy and often aggression. When it comes to science fiction, excellent examples of this are, once again, Mass Effect ships, with this time the Alliance Navy. The stark white paint of their ships is clean and modern, the blue highlights and accents make the ships seem refined and in control, the black sections for extra detail add depth, the paint scheme makes the ship look like a united peacekeeping force that's ready for brutal all-out warfare. That image may be entirely incorrect from the politics and the lore of the actual universe, but the Alliance Navy does look like a unified peacekeeping force more than it does a brutal oppressive regime, and a huge part of that is down to the color scheme. Paint that thing angry reds and blacks and you'd probably have a very different outlook on what the ships appear as. On the flip side, however, we have an example of very few colors being used just as well. The Borg Cube from Star Trek is a very, very deep gray, fading to almost absolute black when in shadow, and it has a sickly green glow of its lights and energy and is profoundly uncomfortable to look at. It feels and looks alien and unwelcoming, and I feel like we can agree switching the color to blue or red wouldn't carry the same feeling, because green is often used to represent sickness or disease or decay, greed and stuff like that as well, but for the most part like sickness and disease when in narrative settings. And the Borg can very easily be described as an almost unliving virus that's just consuming everything in its path. That is a very succinct way to describe the Borg. Now, with all of that covered, let me explain why the Star Destroyer from Star Wars is my favorite ship design in all of science fiction. The Star Destroyer first brings your eyes to the front hull. It's perfectly angular, so harsh shadows are cast across it in absolutes, no gentle gradients. It carries your eye to the base of the superstructure and around its edges as you follow the shape of the ship seeing briefly the cluttered mess of city-like structures before you come to the next layer of armored hull-like steps. 
the detail is broken up by long stretches of easily parsable flat surface that helps accentuate the form of the ship and keep its profile readable while shepherding your eye up to the bridge. The thin neck separating the head and surrounding it by space means it's like a little visual island up there, letting you linger for a bit longer to appreciate the more detailed segments like the flat communications array and the bulbous shield generators. And speaking of, the shapes in the ship are so elegantly simple, it's great. The hull is a giant triangle made of smaller triangles. The superstructure and head are slightly deformed squares, so you have this aggressive, angry looking hull studded with guns leading up to this brick shithouse of a superstructure also studded with guns, which leads to the head bridge command structure thing on top also studded with guns, and all of the defensive elements, or more accurately for the ISD non-offensive aspects, like the shield or reactor down below out of sight, are round and smooth, as well as the engines are, an obvious juxtaposition to the rest of the ship. And after that, you can enjoy the little details, the gunnery trench along the sides of the hull, the small little indents in the armor on the top and bottom, the smaller steps along the sides of the superstructure that leads down to the main gun batteries, and on the underside, the hangar illuminated by stark, harsh white lighting, sometimes an extremely pale blue, with its grappling arms and visible hangar doors. All of this is in the most oppressive gray you can pick. It's not light enough to be seen as white when a star shines on it, or dark enough to be black when in shadow. It's this constant, mind-numbing gray that refuses to be unseen. It's a lifeless, cold, sterile, angry machine built to kill and intimidate it, and it looks so perfect. This is the embodiment of the no-no Germans in space aesthetic that is often really hokey or silly, but just, oh, it's done so well. In my opinion, the Star Destroyer is maybe the perfect ship design. I can't think of anything that would come even remotely close to it in terms of its role, the lore behind it, the raw look and charisma it has. It is basically the perfect evil bad guy ship. And the best part, it's bureaucratic evil. It was built like this to save money on looks and design because all of that paint is the cheapest kind that you have for spaceships and they didn't want to spring for all of the extra colors and stuff and lighter shades that the Republic did for their Venators. The Empire was like, nah, that's expensive. Make it look ten times more evil to save a few dollars here or there. Also, a little bonus after section, if you're one of the people who has been busy writing a comment asking about this, that, or the other ship or series and how they break the rules, yes, you are correct. But also, gotcha, idiot. I am well aware of how famous many of the rule breakers are, like the flying churches of Warhammer 40k, or the aforementioned Borg Cube being one of the most intimidating ships ever put to screen. But for the most part, every ship that breaks from what I've talked about before can break the rules because they understand them so well, and there's usually a very intentional uh, intent to do so. And I would recommend looking at said ships again and seeing how they cleverly work in a lot of these principles from earlier, while looking on the surface like they follow absolutely no rules whatsoever. 40k is a great example. The church ships of the Imperium are greebly over-designed, over-detailed nightmares. Except they're not. They're made up of a few very, very big simple shapes that are obvious from almost any angle. The giant prow the central square block structure, the often little underhang of other square blocky structures where they put things like the giant plasma cannon, I can't remember what it's called, or the big engine block which is just a series of cylinders stacked around in a circle on the back of the ship. Even the bridge and a lot of that really complicated church-like spires and arches and stuff is spread out in between these larger structures so that it's still a parsable shape. Even when we look at some of the oldest and most hilariously over-detailed art that 40k has, these large basic structures are still present in the ships and lead a lot of readability to them. And all of that ridiculous extra design and all of the greebling up is basically used to sell the aesthetic and the style without actually negatively impacting on the actual form of the ship itself. But for the most part, 
That pretty much concludes the video on how to actually make your designs look good and be parsable on screen or in comic or whatever form they might show up in. A little expose on some really good designs according to me and some really terrible designs according to me. Now, you don't have to agree, there's a lot of wiggle room in here, you might completely disagree, and I'm sure there's plenty of art or examples out there you can point to that you may say completely invalidates what I think. Regardless, feel free to disagree in the comments below, let me know what you think. I could just be a bumbling idiot talking into a microphone on the other side of a computer screen. Regardless though, I hope you've enjoyed it. Before we fully end off the video, a huge thanks to all of Size patrons. Your continued support is greatly appreciated and is just awesome. Thanks for voting on this topic. Again, you picked wrong, but it was still enjoyable to make. With a special thank you to all of the $5 patrons feeding my co-host Steve. David G, The Original, Augie, 11 Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, The Other One, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, and BT Legend. Thank you all very much for your support. I hope it'll continue in the future. And with that, the video is over. Outros are hard. I have nothing to say. Goodbye.